There's a new study that was published yesterday in Nature, and it reports on the drug ketamine and how it apparently has a very positive result in fighting depression. Now, ketamine is actually an animal tranquilizer. <laughs> I think it's mostly used on horses, uh, but it's also kind of a well-known party drug, too. So they explain here, clinical trials have shown that ketamine can lift depression in hours or even minutes much faster than the most commonly used antidepressant medications now available, which often require weeks to take effect. Further, the antidepressant, uh, antidepressant effects of a single dose can last for a week or longer. The authors of the study were quick to note that despite legitimate medical uses, ketamine also has disassociative, euphoric, and addictive properties, making it a potential drug of abuse and limiting its usefulness as a depression medication. Okay, um, so to that last part, I don't know, I'm skeptical. I have kind of unorthodox views on that kind of stuff. I always thought, well, yeah, if something works, it's going to be addictive. Because think about it, if somebody's super depressed and they're miserable and they take something and they're not depressed anymore and they're not miserable, are they going to want to keep taking that thing? Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't they want to keep taking that thing? But then people go, oh, but then you're addicted. Yeah, because it worked. <laughs> I mean, what do you want them to do? Not want the thing that's the cure? It, it just, I don't know. I, I'm unorthodox in the sense that most people would hear that and probably even most doctors would hear that and go, oh my god, that's like, you're wild. But I don't know. That's the way I've always thought about it. If you're taking something and it works, to not take it is just stupid. If it works, take it. <laughs> Now, I get it. I, I view addiction as if you go overboard and you take too much of it and you're so dependent on it that you can't do anything else. But I, I don't know. I don't think that's often the case with most most of these things. Like, if you take a, an antidepressant pill every day, nobody judges you. It's like, oh, you're just, that's your medicine. But if it's something like ketamine and you have to do it once a week or whatever, why, people all of a sudden judge you. I don't get it. I just don't get it. But anyway, I digress from that. This is fascinating because this is a, a different kind of uh, antidepressant medication that uh, hasn't been on the market. And uh, I know that I saw a podcast with Joe Rogan and somebody else, I forget the name, forgive me, but this that person did was depressed and they did ketamine treatment. They said they used antidepressants for a long time and never worked. Then they did ketamine treatment and they're like, oh, worked instantly. And they said they only had, you don't have to do it often, every once in a while you do it. And I thought that's amazing, man. And the main takeaway from this is, at least to me, there's so much potential among uh, certain drugs that are, are just so taboo that you can't even breach the conversation without being looked at as a junkie. You know, like if somebody were to say, hey, maybe there are some beyond the dental stuff, which already is the case with cocaine. Maybe there are some medical uses uh, that are uh, positive for cocaine. People go, oh, my God. Look at you, you're so deviant. But meanwhile, they disregard the fact that fucking morphine basically is heroin. So when you get in a car accident, they're giving you heroin so you don't feel pain. So ironic, like people don't realize we don't live in a drug-free society. You wouldn't want to live in a drug-free society. Drugs we actually take for granted and they get a bad rap when oftentimes they're fantastic. They're great. You take caffeine in the morning, congratulations, you're doing a drug. You drink a Monster Energy, congratulations, you're doing a drug. You get anxiety sometimes and your doctor prescribes you those little pills that you pop every now and then, congratulations, you're doing a drug. The list goes on and on. So there should be no stigma attached to, hey, you know, this person uh, is depressed, SSRIs aren't working for them, those are the old school antidepressants, so they want to try ketamine treatment. I mean, at face value, people go, oh, that's a party drug, or oh, you're taking a horse tranquilizer, but... <laughs> It, if it works, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? So now we're finally going down these uh, paths and we're seeing positive benefits. There were other studies that we covered. You give people ecstasy, MDMA, you know, uh, mushrooms in some cases. And it, when they're in, like, they have terminal illnesses and they don't have much time left, you give them these drugs, all of a sudden, not depressed anymore. Like, they were super depressed before. Now, all of a sudden, they're like, no, it's cool. They come to, they're happy with where they're at. They're, they're not afraid. They have these uh, transformative experiences. And why not make that a thing? Because it works. You know, it used to be the case nobody did take uh, opiates when they were in pain. But then uh, doctors realized, oh, that helps them. They're not in pain anymore. Give it to them. Why the stigma attached to it? And actually, the real opiate crisis that we have, because people often talk about, oh, the abuse in the U.S. Sure, that is an issue. Absolutely. 
But the bigger opiate crisis we have is worldwide, where there are many third world countries where people have terminal illnesses and they don't have opiates. They don't have painkillers. So they lay there in pain all day and they want to fucking die because of what they're going through. And, you know, we can't give them sufficient relief from their pain. That's the real opiate crisis. And we need the solution to that, which is more opiates into regions around the world that don't have it. I feel the same way about all these different substances. You know, this is something that if it has the potential to cure people and make them happier and fix whatever chemical imbalances they have and change their outlook for the better, to be against that, you'd have to be heartless. Not to be for it. To be for it means you actually have a heart and you give a shit about people.